Cheap Cheap Beach is one of those courses on 150cc that somehow manages to be really straightforward while simultaneously making you want to pull your hair out. As we'll see when we get into the tutorial, this is in large part due to the underwater section since you have to do a lot of maneuvering without being able to actually see where you're going. I was honestly a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to get a good run going in time to meet my normal weekly schedule because this course is surprisingly technical, but fortunately things ended up working out. So welcome to part 19 of basic training where we're going to cover everything you need to know about Cheap Cheap Beach on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. This tutorial is going to be broken down into three parts. In part one, I'm going to go over a basic version of the run that won't include any advanced strategies whatsoever and is designed to be widely reproducible so that you can easily conquer the staff ghost. In part two, I'm going to go over the strategies that I use in my current personal best, and in part three, I'll cover the world record strats. To help put all the different strategies in context, I'm also going to be including full replays in each part of the tutorial. I definitely recommend checking out my drifting and advanced strats videos if you haven't already, since some of the stuff I'm going to cover in my PB strats, like soft drifting and glider vectoring, are explained in detail in those videos. Now before we get into the tutorial, well, you all know how YouTube works at this point, it'd be a huge help if you could like the video and leave a comment. This type of thing not only lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but also lets YouTube know to recommend these videos to other racers who might be looking for tips and tricks on how to improve. I also release a new video every week, so if you want to stay up to date with my latest content, please consider becoming a subscriber and hitting the notification bell beside it so that you don't miss out on any of my tutorials. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. The recommended build for this course is going to be Waluigi, Streetle, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider. Streetle itself is actually not that great of a cart, but what it does do, it does very well. Case in point, if you compare this build to our usual tryhard build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Azure Rollers, and Paper Glider, you can see that it's got much higher water speed, slightly higher air speed, and better traction. All of which are going to be a big help on this course because for one, the whole thing is on a beach, which is going to make things a lot more slippery, and for two, there's a pretty sizable underwater section. Now that we've covered the build, let's check out the track. The level one version of the run is pretty straightforward. Drive until you get up to the bridge, then start a right drift and build up a mini turbo. This bridge is actually pretty weird, and I've noticed that if you hop to start your drift a little bit too early, it can give you a little bounce that delays your drift a bit. That's why I usually wait to start the drift until just after getting up onto the bridge. After that, trick off the glider ramp, grab the middle coin, and drift around this long right turn until you build up a super mini turbo. Now when we come up to this part of the track, you're going to be tempted to follow the sandbar. After all, there's a bunch of coins, you can build up some mini turbos, and you can get a trick off the ramp at the end. The thing is though, the turns here are so wide that it's actually faster to drive straight into the water. And what we're going to actually do here is start a right drift when you get to these two coins. The goal here is to do the right drift and then hold left to widen your drift angle and grab both coins. And then keep holding left so that you can grab one of the coins underwater. Again, it's important to keep holding left because there's a giant patch of off-road that you can't see really well until you're already in the water, and holding left before going into the water should allow you to drift around it. After that, release your mini turbo and drive straight up the beach. Once you're about to exit the water, angle yourself towards this tree and then start a right drift. Grab the coin in between the tree and the wall and then just drive straight to grab the next three coins. Before finishing up the lap, just want to point out that everything we just covered after going off the orange boost ramp is a massive headache. The problem is that you can't actually see where you're going when entering and exiting the water, and it's not at all uncommon to either hit the off-road when you get into the water or else run face first into the tree when coming out of the water. Unfortunately, you don't really have any other options than to just keep running the track over and over again until you get a feel for how to avoid these obstacles. Other than that though, the rest of the lap is pretty straightforward. Drift around this wide left turn and build up an ultra mini turbo, then start a left drift and grab some coins if you need them, and then finally mushroom through the off-road. And after you come out of the off-road, trick off the two ramps to finish the lap. The only real difference between laps one and two is, annoyingly enough, the underwater section. As if driving blind wasn't sufficiently painful, the crabs here operate on a global cycle, and if you don't take a super wide line going into this turn, it's really likely that you'll end up running into them. Thankfully, their positioning is predictable, but they can still be a bit difficult to avoid. Other than that though, that's pretty much all the strats for the level 1 run, so let's quickly recap the coin lines. You'll grab your first coin just after getting onto the bridge. Coin 2 will come just after the glider ramp. Coins 3 and 4 will be just before the beach. Coins 5 and 6 will come from the underwater section. 
Coins 7, 8, and 9 will come from just after you exit the water, and coin 10 will come from just before going into the final dirt section of the track. If you miss some of the coins like I did, you can either grab them just before the mushroom cut or when tricking off the ramps. But that's it for the level 1 strats, let's check out the run. Alright, moving on to PB strats, really the main difference is that I build up additional mini turbos. For example, at the very start of the run, you want to do a soft drift around the first turn to build up a super mini turbo instead of a regular mini turbo. Then you want to do two left hops into a right drift to build up a mini turbo before the glider ramp and do some glider vectoring. We're going to take this wide right turn more or less the same as before, but once we get to the orange boost ramp, things are going to start looking pretty different. First of all, it's important to make sure that you're going off the middle of the ramp at a slight left angle. Trick off the ramp and then hold down the drift button and left on the joystick so that when you land, you'll immediately start a left drift. Then you want to start holding right on the joystick to widen your drift angle until just before getting to the two coins, at which point you should have a mini turbo built up. So release, do a right hop before you grab the two coins, and then do another hop to start a right drift. You want to make sure that you're building up this mini turbo before you get to the two coins, by the way, so that you have enough time to be fully in the right drift before going into the water. If you build up that first mini turbo too late, then what's going to happen is you'll do your right hop and grab the coins, but then when you do the second right hop to start your drift, you won't land in time and you won't be able to actually start your drift until after you land in the water. This is going to screw up your line and make the next part of the strategy more or less impossible. So once we've started our right drift and gone into the water, make sure to start holding left on the joystick so that you can widen your drift angle around the off-road just like before. However, once you've gotten past the crab, you actually don't want to release your mini turbo right away. Instead, you want to wait until you're just about in line with the rightmost coin and then release, at which point you immediately start a left drift and then hold right to widen your drift angle. The reason for delaying the release of the mini turbo in this way is that we want to build up an extra mini turbo with this left drift, but the problem is that there's another crab in the way here. So what we want to do is drift in such a way that we can grab the coin, avoid the off-road, and avoid the crab. The line that we're able to get from delaying our mini turbo is what allows us to do all of this successfully. After we build up that mini turbo, do a right hop into a right drift to grab the coin in between the tree and the wall just like before, but now, instead of driving straight through to grab all three coins, we're going to again delay the release of our mini turbo so that we can start a left drift to grab the two coins, and then do another right hop into a right drift to go into the dirt section. The only difference in this turn between the level 1 run and my PB is that I soft drift around this turn to build up the ultra mini turbo more quickly, which allows me to take a tighter line around the mushroom cut. 
Speaking of which, when doing the mushroom cut, you actually want to make sure to time the use of your mushroom so that it runs out just after you exit the off-road, so quite a bit earlier than your brain might be telling you to. This allows you to soft drift around the cut and build up a super mini turbo, whereas on lap 1, we just built up a regular mini turbo. Other than that, lap 2 plays the same as lap 1, except that just like in the level 1 version of the run, we want to make sure to take a wide line when going into the water to avoid the crap. And that's going to be it for the PB strats, let's check out the replay. Finally, moving on to the world record strategies, there's not that much that's different between the world record and my PB, except for the fact that, you know, obviously they drive a lot better than I do. There are a couple of key differences though. First of all, when going off the bridge, I did glider vectoring strats by doing two left hops into a right drift off the glider. The world record setup is pretty different, and they just do a couple of normal hops into a right drift so that when they go off the glider, they're way off to the right. This allows them to do motion glider strats. For those of you who don't know, basically what this means is that after they go off the glider and release their mini turbo, they pause the game mid-run, turn on motion controls, and then hold the vectoring angle on both the joystick and on the controller itself. You can tell that this is motion glider by how Waluigi is pretty much at a 90 degree angle during the turn. The world record does this on every lap, although the setup for laps 2 and 3 is different than on lap 1. The reason for doing motion glider is that it basically doubles the speed boost that you get from normal glider vectoring. Check out my advanced strats video if you'd like to learn more about that. The next difference is around that long turn into the dirt section. They build up a mini turbo into a super mini turbo instead of just a single ultra mini turbo like I did. Honestly, I didn't even realize that they did that until I started writing up this section of the script, so that's nice. My guess as to why they do this is that it allows them to take an even tighter line around the mushroom cut than I did and also make sure that their mini turbo boost isn't being cannibalized by the mushroom. After coming out of the cut, they immediately start a right drift to do a mini turbo trick off the first ramp at the end of the lap. The timing on this though is ridiculously tight, and I pretty much gave up on it after just a handful of attempts. Moving on to lap 2, there are actually quite a few differences from lap 1. First of all, like I mentioned, the setup that they use for the motion glider is pretty different in that they go off the left hand side of the ramp rather than the right hand side. Not 100% sure as to why, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it allows them to approach the wide right drift at a more optimal angle in the sense that it allows them to do a super mini turbo into mini turbo instead of just a super mini turbo like on lap 1. The other major difference is the beach section. They do a left hop when going off the ramp and then land in a wide right drift. They then build up a mini turbo and do a left hop into a right drift to build up another mini turbo around the off-road. This is actually a pretty recent innovation though, and previous world records take the beach turns exactly the same on laps 1, 2, and 3. 
One thing to point out though, is that because they're so much faster than my PB, the crab is actually not in the way here. So they can take a really tight line around the off-road instead of having to drift around the crab like I did. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the world record strategy. So let's check out the replay. And that's everything you need to know about Cheap Cheap Beach on 150cc. Like I said, in general, a pretty straightforward course, but the whole beach section is actually really technical, which kept the course surprisingly interesting to run. Still doesn't save it from being a massive pain in the ass though, all things considered. In particular, the coin lines on this track are pretty tricky to get right, and it's definitely gonna take a lot of practice. But hey, if nothing else, at least you get to race on a really nice looking track with some pretty chill music. But that's gonna be it for me for today, everyone. Let me know down in the comments if and how much time you were able to save from the strats I went over in this video, cause I really enjoy hearing about how much these videos have helped you all out. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.